Pope Leo X hosted elaborate dinners night after night. One ambassador sent a breathless letter home. The meal was exquisite. There was an endless succession of dishes, for we had 65 courses. Giovanni de' Medici had risen higher than any of his ancestors. And now the new pope inherited a fresh artistic legacy inside the Vatican itself. Leo created hundreds of new jobs in the Vatican and sold them to those he could trust. And he needed the money. Because within just one year of his extravagant lifestyle, he had emptied the papal coffers. Soon, Leo X owed money to every bank in Rome. Behind the scenes, Giulio was pawning the papal jewels. So Leo turned to the source of income only available to the Pope himself, the sale of forgiveness. He started selling what are called papal indulgences. And these are basically pieces of paper which give you remission from sins. So if you've been naughty in some respect, the Pope would sell you an indulgence which would remit your sins, it would cleanse your sins. Leo wasn't the first Pope to sell indulgences, but he sold them on an unparalleled scale. And his tariff was affordable to even the poorest man. Across Europe, Leo found the ready market because an indulgence could mean freedom from an eternity in hell. The sale of salvation was a gold mine for the Pope. could even be bought on behalf of the dead, so that their soul might be sped on its journey to heaven. Profits from the sale of absolution were lifting Pope Leo out of debt. But for one man, a German monk named Martin Luther they were a step too far. Many of the great money houses would hedge their bets and finance both sides of a war. Sophisticated intelligence gathering networks gave the financiers a clear edge over the governments they were slowly gaining control of. On the 18th of June, 1815, agents of the British arm of the Rothschild family looked on as Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte fought desperately to save his army from the jaws of a British-Prussian pincer attack. A Rothschild agent was able to get the news of Napoleon's defeat at the hands of Lord Wellington to Nathan Rothschild a full 20 hours before the news reached London. Nathan the head of the British arm of the Rothschild family put out the rumor to the London Stock Exchange that Napoleon had won the war. Stocks plunged by 98% and Rothschild was then able to buy up the entire British economy for pennies on the pound. When the news of Napoleon's defeat finally arrived, stocks soared. Britain was now the undisputed ruler of Europe.
and Rothschild ruled England.